Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin Lefranc. I work as a smart mobility coordinator at Brussels Mobility. Brussels Mobility is the public transport authority uh, for the Brussels capital region. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank ICLEI Korea and the EU Korea Climate Action for giving me and uh, giving us this opportunity to present to you uh, our Good Move uh, Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, as well as different projects that are currently carried on. Good move, what is it? It's basically the path towards sustainable and innovative mobility solutions in the Brussels capital region. And I never ever miss a chance to promote Good Move. Uh, it's one of our uh, pride for the moment at Brussels Mobility. But now, even more than ever, because we recently were um, the winner of the SUMP award awarded by the European Commission. Um, so this gives us, gives us even more confidence and strength to carry on and, and go full steam ahead in the policies that are presented in this um, plan. And one of its uh, biggest strengths uh, for Good Move is that it has been co-constructed and consulted with many stakeholders here in Brussels, uh, either from the public sector, of course, but uh, in the private sector as well, as well as civic associations. So um, a lot of people agreed upon what inside um, Good Move. So it gives it, it gives us really a, a good chance and opportunity to use this same tool for all these stakeholders in terms of mobility in the Brussels capital region. And what is Good Move? First of all, it's a city vision. Uh, during these uh, co-building sessions with uh, private, uh, public and, and civic associations, uh, we defined what, the, what was the city that we wanted to see by 2030 here in Brussels. And basically, the main words that uh, came out of these discussions is a green city, a social, pleasant, healthy, um, effective, safe and efficient city. These were the terms that were used. This was the vision that uh, people wanted to see for the city of Brussels. And then we also defined a mobility vision. In a nutshell, the mobility vision is to manage the global demand for trips, to reduce the usage of privately owned car, to strengthen the mobility service solution and mobility as a service, um, to create structured and efficient transport and transit networks, um, an important focus has been highlighted on urban logistics as well, as it takes more and more presence in the traffic and, and um, mobility uh, in Brussels. Uh, mobility vision is also to uh, manage the parking uh, policies in line with the mobility vision, not give too much importance to parking. And one of the main goals is to create these districts, the small districts, um, and in these districts, the uh, goal is to reduce the traffic stress. Um, there are a few examples. Here is a picture of a, a recent um, refurbished a street in, in XL, the, the community uh, of XL. Um, but this is what, what we want to see. Uh, people should be able to access locally, of course, their houses. But we don't want to have too much traffic um, inside these districts. So. Uh, an amount of these districts has been defined in Good Move. We have about 50 of these. And this is a comparison between the no move uh, scenario that we've called and the Good Move scenario. Good Move is again the this, this vision that we have for 2030 in Brussels. And no move is basically what's happening right now or, or what has been happening in the past few years. Is that everyone used every mode of transportation in every street of the city. And now we want to have a structured way of these of, of this traffic uh, and have the, um, the the inner part of these districts more dedicated to local traffic, uh, active mobility um, uh, flow and uh, leave uh, the car traffic on the main axis of the city and on the ring road, the outside ring road. And for this purpose, we have defined five intertwined efficient networks for active mobility, walking and cycling, for public transport, for um, car traffic, as well as for heavy load um, logistic transport. And for each of these networks, we have defined three levels of, of comfort, basically. The plus level, the comfort level and the district level. And 
the mobility vision in nutshell is basically to reduce the mode share of um, privately owned car trips by a quarter from 33% of what uh, of the mode share today by 2030 it should be 24% and um, compensating this with collective and shared trips of course public transport or shared mobility but uh, indiv individual active and micro mobility trips as well and good move is more than ju than just a vision it, uh, it's important to have a vision but it's also 50 tangible action concrete actions that we have separated in six focuses that um, hinge around three most important leverage, which is territory, behavior, and governance. Those six uh, focuses are good neighborhood, good network, good service, good choice, good partner, and good knowledge. Each of these focus have has a, a set of different actions that are basically our um, plan for the next years at Brussels Mobility. But of course, these actions necessitate, necessitate um, uh, co-working and, and um, collaboration of different organizations here in Brussels, either public or private. And this is highlighted uh, in the good partner uh, focus, of course. And just to give you an example of these, what these actions are, uh, let me talk about a few of the actions that I'm uh, following here uh, as a smart mobility coordinator. Um, I focus uh, specifically on mobility as a service and shared mobility policies. So um, one of the main actions is supporting the development of mobility as a service, and I'll go further into details a little bit later in this presentation. Um, it is important to set up information points and integrated service hubs as well. Uh, we uh, want to develop even more services with respect, with respect to bicycle and micro-mobility micro solutions. We strongly believe in these solutions as uh, an opportunity to take over a few of the uh, trips that are made by individual cars. We want to have a service approach to parking. Parking is a service, of course. Um, and reinforce shared mobility services. For the moment, these shared mobility services are um, very present in Brussels, but still remain kind of a niche product. And we want to increase the market uh, to create basically a win-win-win solution, uh, basically for um, uh, mobility solution providers on the one side, from the, the private sector, uh, the public authority on the second side, and third, hopefully, um, create interesting services for uh, citizens of Brussels. Everything is, of course, available online if you want to look further into Good Move. Um, soon there will be uh, an English version of an executive summary available online for the moment, just in French and, and, and Dutch. Hopefully, uh, you can uh, try to, to find some more information, uh, interesting details about the Good Move plan online. But now, let me try to go a little bit deeper in uh, a project that we are currently carrying out, which is called Developing Innovative Mobility Solutions in the Brussels Capital Region. It is a project um, that is financed by the European Commission and the DG Reform in a program that is called Structural Reform Support Program. And we applied to this last year, um, strongly believing that creating a regulatory framework for mobility as a service and shared mobility at the, the regional and local level was really something that uh, needed some expertise and counsel from, from, uh, uh, from other partners. And so we have applied and we started this partnership, partnership last July with the International Transport Forum, which is part of the OECD. Um, we have uh, started in July for a duration of uh, one year, and the idea is to uh, consult with every stakeholders uh, of the mass landscape or shared mobility landscape to create a, a framework that is really appropriate for the development of innovative mobility, mobility solutions. Create a framework that uh, encourages these kind of solutions. 
And here, uh, let me take uh, a few extra an extract of the presentation made by Philippe Christ, who is who is uh, advisor innovation at Foresight at the International Transport Forum. Uh, and he used this presentation for the, the Mass in Brussels webinar that took place uh, last month in October uh, to create interest and to promote the project among stakeholders. So basically, this is the usual traditional landscape of mobility in Brussels. We have uh, regular trucks and vans uh, going around the city to deliver um, packages. Uh, we, of course, have the good old walking solution. We have uh, quite a strong base of public transport, the car traffic, of course, and bicycle uh, traffic, which is uh, increasing quite dramatically uh, since the past few months. But in the past few years, uh, a set of new solutions and future sol solutions that could actually arrive, of course, have changed dramatically this landscape. We have uh, many present shared micromobility solutions in Brussels. Scooter share, bike share, car share, ride sourcing and ride hailing, on-demand public transport, and in the future, probably deliver, uh, delivery, delivery bots and delivery drones. Not too many, hopefully. So, this creates um, a layer, a new layer, an interface between us as an authority and these services, these new services. Uh, a digital interface, which implies some automation and artificial intelligence. These are things that we're not used to, um, to manage here at uh, Brussels Mobility. But these are things that we have to prepare in the future to be able to manage. But one thing that is important, and I think it's really close to what we have in mind for Good Move, the real goal is quality of life. The real center of what we are doing is people. People living in Brussels, people visiting Brussels, people working in Brussels. And all this technology should not uh, make us forget that. This is what's at stake. This is the center of attention. So, the, the, the people of Brussels are basically you and me, or not you actually for the moment, because you are, I, I believe in Korea, but uh, anybody uh, living in Brussels or working in Brussels. And there's so many choices in terms of transport, and it's confusing. So, but of course, uh, the goal is to create one interface um, to make it easier for people to access all these solutions and to let them be aware of these solutions, because most of them are not uh, very well known. A mass platform is something that should be able to um, get access to these vehicles, to pay for these vehicles, to have services and, and call centers to ask a few questions, uh, to have equity uh, and of accessibility, to be able to calculate some route and itineraries. Um, this is what mass mobility as a service is. And of course, there are different uh, mass solutions already existing in Brussels, but they are not um, uh, comprehensive in terms of uh, the offer of mobility. So there are uh, possibilities to download a few applications for one or few of these mobility solutions, but we want to make it easier. We want to be an enabler for a more comprehensive uh, solutions and solutions that are actually are uh, really interesting and uh, attractive for the, the customers and the citizens. Eventually, the project, the partnership with the International Transport Forum, uh, will be supporting the development of mobility as a service, or MAS, for the Brussels capital region. Specifically, it will assist Brussels mobility in establishing an efficient and resilient, resilient regulatory framework for MAS. This is the end goal. And the approach that we're going to do, uh, what we're going to have is to uh, define an appropriate governance to guide technology deployment in support of people. This is the uh, layers of importance. Uh, technology, technology should not be leading uh, the, the policy. It's the interest of people and citizens of Brussels that actually is at the center of our concerns. And eventually, the project will deliver a set of policy recommendations on regulation frameworks and data governments for Mars. Indeed, the data governments uh, is really something that is important and is very sensitive for the moment. There are a lot of questions raised whether um, operators 
should share data, uh, what kind of data they should share, how we as an authority should treat it uh, and protect it from, uh, from uh, other um, stakeholders. And this is something that we're going to, do, to define together with the other stakeholders in the Brussels capital region. And ITF, International Transport Forum, will help us uh, lead the way and have this kind of neutral position in this debate. So I think we're going to have very, very interesting results. I'm very excited to be part of these projects as I think I'm going to uh, learn a lot of things on how to define the most balanced uh, system uh, for everybody to be to have an interest in the development of mobility as a service. Uh, I think the issue of trust is one of the most important issues in this uh, project and we are going to define a framework that creates the most trust between the stakeholders. The project will review international experiences with developing mobility as a service frameworks and uh, we're going to review lessons from regulation of other of the domains of transport and services in general and approaches in other cities. So we're going to go do a benchmarking, basically. Uh, we are going to prepare a readiness assessment of the state of the Brussels capital region for implementing mobility as a service. Uh, this readiness assessment is uh, currently carried out by ITF. We're going to review case studies of data governance framework and develop guidance for their development. So this is what we were talking right before and this um, balance that should be uh, needed for every stakeholders implied in this mobility as a service landscape. And eventually, at last, consult stakeholders via meetings and a review workshop with public transport authorities and operators, mass platform operators and shared mobility operators. So they are going to help us uh, conduct these uh, meetings and these workshops with all um, concerned stakeholders here in Brussels and Belgium. So this was uh, the presentation and the, the parenthesis about our project, a project with the International Transport Forum. Uh, but uh, our uh, public transport operator, which is called the STIB MEVB here in Brussels, is already getting their hands dirty in terms of mobility as a service. They are, are currently conducting a mass mobility as a service pilot project with about 2000 users here in Brussels. The project is called Move Brussels. It started uh, in September. It was delayed quite a few months due to, of course, the current pandemic uh, that we are suffering all around the world, all around the globe. Um, but it started in September uh, with about 2000 users. And um, this allows us, uh, specifically uh, the public transport auto auto operator, but the public transport authority as well, because we are um, watching the development of the project quite closely. But this helps us better understand what actually a mass product is uh, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, knowledge and, and uh, human resource uh, that is required to develop and, and follow closely such a project. Uh, it will better. It will allow us to better understand what's at stake for the scalability of such a project. Um, starting with 2,000 people is already a good start, but the intention is to have many, many more users. So we have to, to better understand how it works and what it requires to develop such a tool. So we are uh, hopefully uh, we are very very hopeful in, in what we are going to learn for this project and actually better understand what the impact of a mobility as a service solution to the end user actually is and how it can change their mobility habits, hopefully in a good way uh, towards sustainable uh, mobility solutions. I could talk to you about many, many more projects and policies uh, that are that is currently happening uh, in Brussels. I could talk to you about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the temporary bicycle and pedestrian infra infrastructures that has dramatically increased uh, a share of uh, active mobility. Basically, from 2019 to 2020, uh, in September, we have an increase of 100% uh, for cycling uh, specifically thanks, uh, among other things, to these temporary uh, infrastructures. Uh, we also have, we are also con conducting a very interesting micro mobility data collection platform, uh, which helps us learn a lot of things about 
who uh, is actually using these kind of services and uh, how we can use this data to better design our policies and our infrastructures in the future. We have also a smart move project, which is uh, being discussed in the press quite heavily because it's a uh, topic that is quite sensitive uh, called the urban toll project, uh, which could be combined with mobility as a service, a very, very effective and powerful tool uh, for uh, the completion of our good move goals and policies. Uh, I could talk to you about Munstholm, which is a multimodal flows data collection. It's about to start uh, with very um, a fascinating perspective in the future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, this is uh, just to give you um, a slight view of what we're doing at Brussels Mobility. I would like to thank you all for your attention, and please don't hesitate to contact me if you are interested in uh, these projects and if you have questions. I can give you all the de details that you yeah, that you need. Thank you very much and hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.